if you are looking for a really crisp reaction to Merry Christmas, I'm just going to put it out there. I think it is a darkly fantastical old world fairy tale compressed into one night in a city. To me, it was fascinating, engaging, and it's just as romantic as it should have been. It sparked in me this urge to revisit classic thrillers from Hitchcock et al. And when a film inspires me to watch more films, I believe that it has delivered. I'm fully aware that a lot of critics are calling this film too slow, so I'm going to give you my hot take about that. I think calling a film slow and expecting people to take that lazy adjective as valid criticism is so entitled. Slow does not say anything about the film. It only says something about your attention span. Expecting a thriller to cater to whatever arbitrary definition of fast-paced you have in your mind and being disappointed that a storyteller chose to narrate their piece in a way that does justice to their conception of a story. It is, as I said, a very entitled way of watching a film. I am not saying that a film can never bore you, of course it can, but if I take my boredom and present it like an objective reading of the film, I am going to misguide others. If I am bored with a film, maybe it did not engage me. But if it did not engage me and I really wasn't putting my mind into it because I wasn't engaging with it, what I say about it does not hold, does it? Anyway, that's just my opinion. Back to Merry Christmas. Now, the rest of this video will only make sense if you have seen the film. If you haven't, this is your spoiler alert. The rest of this is me analyzing the film and I'm going to give away some of its reveals. So go and watch the film first. If you have seen it, I think you will agree that in a way, this film takes a leap of faith when it comes to reorienting a romantic fairy tale. And it sticks the landing. It does a lot of things that appeal so much to me. The first is the way that it remains faithful to the dark origins of a fairy tale. Fairy tales are governed by the principle that there exists a world that does not operate on the ethical and logical standards of the real world. Merry Christmas borrows from this. A lot of the things that happen in this film would not happen in reality and even if they did, they would be viewed very differently. Within the film, the parts fit together. Characters with hidden motivations cross paths, flirtation is layered with intent, seemingly harmless humour is laced with secret connotations, and every showpiece is a piece for show. And much like in a fairy tale, a lot of the things that you consider amoral or impossible or illogical is given a factuality, a conviction. And it is peppered with these references to other pieces of art that place it in a larger matrix of fiction. These other pieces accord deeper meaning to the characters. In the film, the main characters watch Pinocchio at Regal Cinema. The film is obviously using the most famous lore of lies to point at the pretense and deceit of the characters. There's a tribute to Shokti Shamunto, Eric Romer, and Thyagaraj and Kumara Raja. There are two extremely well-placed references to The Merry Widow. And then there's my favourite reference in the film. The one to Rajni Gandha. It is really fun for me as someone fascinated by the concept of intertextuality when a work of art refers to another work of art. The references that the filmmaker adds to this film add character to the story and history to the characters. Suddenly you are confronted by the familiarity of two fictional people walking through a city, exploring space and each other. The characters do not exist in a vacuum. They have fictional predecessors and they will have successors. They are interwoven by this subtextual mycelium of meaning. And it's very often meaning that is far beneath their surface. Some characters do not reveal themselves completely to the viewer's gaze or to the gaze of the other characters. Full discretion, there is a term for this, a term that I should remember, but sometimes my brain withholds information from me because it thinks it's fun. So we are going to have to make do with what I like to call this, a betrayal of the gaze. It's when a character withholds their true intent, meaning or past from another person, refusing to surrender to a stereotype. So she's not just a femme fatale or a beautiful and lonely woman and he's not just a charming man with a wickedly smooth sense of humour exploring the town at night. There's more to them, but they betray each other's attempts at reading the other, therefore betraying the gaze. So they're strangers to a degree, although they are somewhat familiar. This is in a way a tribute to the innate unknowability of another person, an acknowledgement of the fact that what you think you know of another human being is only actually a percentage of who they are. 
Think of the characters in cinema that have surprised you with their decisions or their arc. Any well-written character, whether they are in a thriller or not, is a self-perpetuating mystery. Which brings me to the final part of this piece, the ending. Now, there is also some dissatisfaction in film watches regarding the way this film ends because it ends in mystery, but I personally thought it was a very Sridham Raghavan reversal on a romantic happily ever after. First of all, he has never shown a neat escape for any character who has intended to hurt another character, no matter their reasons. Simi from Andhadun meets with an accident, Raghu from Badlapur continues to stew in his loneliness, Sarika from Ekasinati is once again incarcerated, and so on and so forth. Crime is mostly shown as something that is inescapable and ultimately punishing to the victim, the perpetrator, and the facilitator. This is essentially a destruction of the fairy tale where characters return to reality as their magical night ends and you as the viewer are left to process the weight of their actions. I personally appreciated the fact that this film ended on this note. There's this bittersweet tenderness to it and the film leaves a lot to the audience's ability to comprehend the subtlety and open-endedness of it. This is also possibly the most romantic ending that Sridham Raghavan has created for a film. He refuses to wrap it up neatly. And well, I respect this film's ability to be cognizant of the fact that crime is messy, no matter the reasons behind it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this very long video. If you have stuck with me till the end, congratulations. We are now not only co-obsessive, we have also proven to be very, very patient. So hey, thanks for sticking with me in this. See you soon.